guys, Matt from Master Digital here. In today's video, we take a quick look at Dower's wireless transmission links, alternatively known as beams or point to point or point to multi point solutions, available in both uh, AC867 and N300 specifications. You've got your smaller satellite units um, and then your uh, larger base station units themselves. So if you're looking at just doing a single point to point um, from a house or a main office um, across to uh, a shed, um, a uh, a long drive with an intercom at the bottom for a gate um, or uh, a farmyard with sheds uh, for carving cameras, things like that, that you want to transmit that video signal from those CCTV cameras back to the recorder in a different location. These are ideal for that. Your satellite units themselves, really nice, small, uh, handheld sort of units, really. Um, really small, uh, ideal for sort of hiding away, not being too noticeable um, from when they're installed. Like I say, they are available in AC or N specifications. Um, they come with a 30 degree angle, um, vertical and horizontal from the signal itself. The larger base stations have a 90 degree angle, um, so a slightly wider field of view for their signal. Um, ideal for linking up, I say, point to point um, at a single location, or you can use the base station and link up multiple. The larger base station is really slim as well, um, so it's not as bulky as some of the beams that are out there. Um, nice and easy to mount, you've got your connections on the bottom, so your ethernet um, and your reset buttons in the bottom, and then your signal lights and uh, data and power connectivity lights on the side of the units themselves. And we'll go through a quick setup process of a individual point to point, and also then a point to a multi-point solution using the base station. Okay, so we've got everything plugged in. I'm just going to dial into the main access point, the first unit that we're going to set up. Now, by default, it is on 1.36 range, um, but it will work off of DHCP as well. So this first beam that we're going to log into um, is on 115. Now, as soon as you log into it with the admin username and password, um, you'll notice a operating country. We need to change that to the UK, and this will then just change the operating country for the unit itself. Now in this demonstration, we're using the PFWB5-30 AC, so the smaller of the units. And we're going to set this first one up um, as an access point, as a single point to point. If you are using the larger um, base station, the setup process will be exactly the same. So we need to change the operating mode to an access point. Click onto the cog at the bottom right, and we can then change the SSID name that we want to give the beam connection. Change the security settings. So we're going to set this as WPA2 personal, and we're just going to set this as uh, our default passphrase for most things we set here is Master Digital, which is change me one exclamation mark. This does give you the ability to adjust the bandwidth limitations of outgoing and incoming um, stations, um, as well as filtering MAC addresses, and also further advanced settings for limiting client connections, signal strengths, um, setting up VLAN tagging, um, all those extra niceties that you can do on these. We'll hit done. The next thing we're going to change on here is going to the network configuration and we're just going to change this from being on a dynamic IP to being on a static IP so we can give this a, a standard location that it will always be found on. So by default it's 1.36. We're just going to put this on a different range so we're going to put this on 2.200, change the submit mask so I can still see the unit through our, our default gateway. You can enter DNS servers if you wish and you can also set up a secondary IP as well. If we hit save, it will just tell us what we've changed um, before it does commit those changes. So we can see the operating mode has changed to an access point. Um, we're using TDMA3 on this. Um, we have got the beam settings, the AP name, um, and then we'll finally save. This will then give us the IP address that it's now changed to. So if I dial into that, we can now log back into the access point. And we can see this is now set up um, as an access point using TDMA3, but we don't have any stations currently linked to it. So we'll plug into the second one. And again, by default, um, they're on 1.36. Again, DHCP has put this one on 1.194. We'll just log back into this. So this is the same process again. Operating country, change that to the United Kingdom. That just makes sure it's got the right channels available for the wireless link to use. And whether you're doing just a single one or multiple, um, 
it's the same process uh, for adding them back to the access point. So we can see one is set as an access point. This one is now set as a station. So we need to go to settings, make sure we are using WDS slash TDMA3, um, relevant same connection to what the access point is set on. Now you can set a primary SSID. So we want to find the network. So you need to do this by searching, um, typing in the name if you've got lots to find, or you can hit the refresh button in the top right if it doesn't show up straight away. And then it should then, if we just take this out, give that a second to finish a second scan. And there we go, we can now see that second beam. And if you see that it's using the TDMA3 protocol, so that's the right beam that we want to connect to. We can select that. We can then enter that same passphrase for the connection. So max that up. And again, from here, you can also lock um, the access connection uh, via the MAC address as well. Um, again, you can limit the bandwidth and you can adjust um, further advanced settings like VLANs um, and such forth. You can also do a failover SSID. So if this first access point um, loses connection, loses power for whatever reason, if you've got another access point that is within the direction um, of this beam that you can see, you can also connect to that. But just for this demonstration, we're only going to be doing the single connection. So we'll hit save in the top right, and this is then say what we're changing. So we're telling it what SSID to connect to. We'll hit save, give that a couple of seconds for it to save. And now once that's saved, we can check back on the main access point. We can see that in the top right it says one station. But one thing we first need to do is make sure this access uh, station point, sorry, is on the same network range. So I'll just put this on 201, give it the correct subnet mask so it can see the default gateway and save again. This will just update that IP address so it's all on the same ranges for the beams. And again, we can click the IP address and it'll take us again back to this connection. You may get this security warning and um, when you first log into them using Internet Explorer, it's okay, just um, click the link to skip past it. Now these are in a very uh, localized connection, so the signal strength will show in the top right hand corner as being too strong. If we log into the main beam, so the access point that we've got set up, we can now see in the top right hand corner we've got this first station connected. If we were doing a point to multi-point solution, we just repeat these same steps for each additional station, adding it to the access point, and this then will update with how many stations you've got connected. And that's it. To find out more about these Dow wireless transmission links, check out masterdigital.co.uk. Don't forget to drop a comment, like and subscribe. And also, if you need any more information, give your account manager a call. We'll see you in the next one.